Let's He's still denies let's, let's choking let's the Let's move past the choke just for a second and bring in Bill Benner. And, and Bill, when you cover night day to day, close up as a beat guy, or in the Indianapolis market, uh, and you're on the outs with him, what's that like? Well, it's, uh, as Curry said, it's no fun. There's always a certain tension that's, that's associated with covering Indiana University basketball when Bob Knight was there. Look, you talk about the media treating him unfairly and singling him out. The media also was compelled to be at Bloomington uh, at every game because they knew that there was always the possibility of some kind of incident that would create statewide furor and nationwide furor. And if you weren't there, you weren't doing your job. Bob Knight, I, I agree with the, the earlier comments that the media is, did not go after Bob Knight. Bob Knight created the image, and the media is merely fed off of it. And I would also say to David that Bob Knight has many, many uh, advocates of, of Bob Knight and his style in the media, well-known writers who have often picked up uh, his cause and defended him passionately. So I think there is balance in covering Bob Knight. David, does he truly not care what's written and said about him? Does he truly not care? No, I think he cares. Um, I think he doesn't uh, want to be portrayed as an ogre. I, I, I believe that, that he would like to tell his story or have his story told in, in, in a way that's more pleasing to him. But I also think he knows that it's basically a losing battle now. He's not going to win it. You know, pe people uh, aren't going to talk as much about his championships as they are about the chair. What Billy Reed said in that piece was right. You could just as easily tease the movie with, with, uh, with shots of the team coming off the court after winning any one of his three championships. People could talk also, for instance, about he, he, he didn't go to the Final Four just five times as a coach. He went to, he's been to the Final Four eight times since 1960. He went three times as a player. And nobody, um, David, it, nobody's, it, ever said that no, he, nobody's ever said that nothing uh, that the ha hasn't happened. That's a fact that he's a great coach. What we're talking about is repeated incident after repeated incident about after repeated incident. Well, but and Bill, if there were repeated incident after repeated incident after repeated incident, why did the, why did the tape of the chair th have to get run until it broke? I guess there well, wasn't repeated incident. If there was that same thing, that kid said that he, it happened when he was two years old, the kid from Nebraska. And it happened, if it happened when he was two years old, and, and, and he thinks it's part of something that happened last week because he saw it so many times, then there isn't repeated incident after repeated incident. There's the well, same I, incident being repeated ad nauseum. Well, David, is, not, it, David, is he lucky, as Phil Mushnick said in the piece, then, that the image is the chair and not the Neil Reed tape? Exactly. No, I, 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 don't, I don't think either image is the image that he would like to have. But he, what, what image but does he have image, now? It, what? What is the image he has now? It's the chair, and it's not the Neil the, Reed the tape. Image he has is the chair, yeah, the, the, but the image is also not the championships. The image is not... Is not the fact that, that Winston Morgan and, and Daryl Thomas were just on your show uh, saying how much they learned from him and, ha and how well they've done in life because they played basketball at Indiana. Curry, the no, the, the David, image is nobody, not the championships. Nobody, nobody is denying that Bob Knight is a great coach, and nobody is denying that he's treated his players after they've left him wonderfully. But what other coach doesn't take care of his players after they leave? I mean, Knight only does what's expected of all coaches. I don't, I don't get where Daryl Thomas and and Winston Morgan and the rest of them, even Ricky Calloway, uh, are, 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 you know, make, putting this guy on a pedestal because he helped them after, after they'd gone from Indiana. And this is what coaches do. I think it's, it's what a lot of coaches do. It's not what every coach does. But let me tell you something. The Neil Reed incident is also what coaches do. Coaches no. put their hands on players. If you don't know that, you've never been coached. They Anybody don't put their played... hands around their neck of oh, players. Oh, come on, Curry. They, they put oh. their hands around wherever it's convenient. Let's, let's be past, let's I, past I've been many practices Bill yet. Better. I've never, I've never, Still never better. Question it. for you, Bill. You've said, uh, verify for us, is, uh, is it indeed a fact that some of these Indiana players, you've said, that have lauded Bob Knight in public, uh, privately to you, have said it, it wasn't all uh, sweetness and light? Well, absolutely. And some of Bob Knight's best-known players have said, uh, away from Bob Knight, that there were many instances and many things that occurred while they were there that they didn't want, that they didn't like. But uh, when it comes to saying that stuff publicly, they, uh, they know that there's nothing to be gained for it, and they will only, again, they'll get caught in the eye of the hurricane just like everybody else. Look, my, my point would be that it's not what Bob Knight does for his players as much as what he's done to them, and the same thing with Indiana University. It wasn't what he did for Indiana University, it, or, or it's what he did to Indiana University. Right. Bill, what did he do to David, Indiana University? out of time. I appreciate it. Guys, thank you. Animated discussion, quite obviously. We appreciate your views. Thanks to Curry, Patrick, David, Israel and to Bill Benner. Thanks. Next, he was Bob Knight's best player. This was his last game for the title 21 years ago. When we return, one of the things that Isaiah took from their relationship. I would like a
Besides language, you saw it in the film, you may have read it in the book, and at one infamous banquet in the 1980s, Isaiah Thomas invoked his former coach's penchant for profanity. The things he taught me while I was there, I'll never forget. You know, they'll always be with me for the rest of my life. Uh, the first thing was, fuck you. Again, tonight's ESPN.com poll question. Log on to answer the question. Would you want your son or someone close to you to play for Bob Knight? We will have the results coming up in a bit. And when we continue, the long shadow and the tall profile that Bob Knight cast today with the Texas Tech Red Raiders. He came out of the arena and it was like a rock star. He had all these people around him and they moved with him as he moved to the bus. And he was signing autographs and things like that. <laughs> Complete. Take the language, take the media images, the recollections of former players, and file them for this moment. Here is the ultimate fact on this Sunday night. Earlier this evening, Bob Knight's Texas Tech Red Raiders, a program that won just nine games last year, was seated sixth in the East Region for the NCAA Tournament. 23 victories this year and a Friday match coming up against Southern Illinois. All of this, Steve Delson reports, in a season that, given the final days at Indiana, is memorable for what did not happen. Since his arrival on the West Texas Prairie, Bob Knight has turned a struggling program into one of the biggest surprises in college basketball. After four losing seasons, Texas Tech is winning, and so far, its famous first-year coach can do no wrong. I think it's kind of obvious that he's done perhaps uh, the best coaching job in the Big 12 if not the nation. But some say the real surprise has been his demeanor. So far, he's just operated on the court and really off the court, too, as, uh, you know, most coaches operate. They come to watch him because of who he is, and then they, they walk away kind of like miffed because, well, where was the chair throwing? Where were the temper tantrums? If Knight is truly more relaxed in Lubbock, it might be because he's now surrounded by allies. The athletic director is his friend of 30 years. His two sons, Pat and Tim, both work here. And um, his old uh, secretary from Indiana and Steve Downing. And he said it's sort of like the Earps going to Tombstone because his whole clan is sort of down here. You know, there's sort of a independent, spirited people here. If he ran for mayor, he'd win in a landslide. Knight has clearly charmed Rachel Castillo, the owner of JC's Burritos who received permission from Knight to name a burrito for him. Of course, he had a say on what went inside the Bobby Knight burrito. He really enjoys eating chicken, and he enjoys eating pork, and he loves green chilies. He said, you take it from there and do whatever you want with it. And that's what I did. Bob Knight is the biggest sensation in Lubbock since native son rock and roller Buddy Holly. And during his first year here, He's been just as big an attraction on the road. Only the second sellout for CU all year, this town and this community have come to see Bobby Knight. Must be, you know, like people going to see Santa Claus. I think they think that Santa Claus and I are a lot alike. You know, affable, friendly, a little overweight, white hair. <laughs> Not everything has gone smoothly this season. In Houston, Knight was confronted by an arena manager after Knight made critical comments about the Texas Tech dressing room. We had a dressing room originally that would have been very, very cramped with four midgets. His former player, Steve Downing, who now works closely with him at Texas Tech, says the only thing that's changed is Knight's location. He is still as driven as ever. From my standpoint, I, I really can't tell a difference. And, and I'm serious when I say that because uh, the work ethic, all the things that he did uh, at Indiana or to, to be competitive or win are the same things that he's doing now and, and with the same results.
And I am joined by Bob Knight's good friend and our colleague here at ESPN, the former Notre Dame head coach, Digger Phelps, who portrayed himself this evening in the movie. Tough to do, man. Yeah, I, I'm sure it was. I'm sure you had a ball doing it, and I had to coax the performance out of you. Your friend, is this the same guy who left Bloomington about 18 months ago? Yeah, it's the same guy. He's just, you know, looking back on his life. I mean, you can look at many great people of the world that were geniuses. I mean, you look at Mozart and how he wrote and what he was as a person. You can look at Van Gogh and how he painted, but... Is this guy a genius? Yeah, and I'll tell you, would you like a Van Gogh in your living room? I think we all would. And I think that's what Knight doesn't really come off as unless you know what it is to be a coach. And being a coach myself, I use the language in the locker room against referees, whatever it may be. But you got a job to take young men at the age of 18 and you've got four years to get them ready for manhood. And if you don't, then you failed. And I think sometimes you see that portrayed. And, and I just got to tell you one quick story about, about Timmy Andre. He was a freshman with John Paxson. He played every game in high school, every game up until February when we're playing Marquette at home. We lose the game by three, and as we're losing, I look down the bench. He's crying. I said, Tim, what's wrong? He said, the first time I haven't played since the fifth grade. I said, what? It's the first time I haven't played since the fifth grade. Bob, I looked down right in the eyes. I said, get used to it. He graduated, ended up playing ball in Japan, learned the language, became the chief sp spokesperson for Toyota USA. Today, or this week, David Stern hired him as vice president of communications for the NBA. That's what you do for four years. And sometimes you get in their face, you scream and yell, but the world's tough. And the game of life is tough. And you've got four years to get them ready for this. All right, but has Bob even made an attempt to learn anything, change at all, since leaving Indiana? I mean, that was a, that was a very acrimonious departure, a tough one to make, but 30 years roots in the community. And now he's out there in West Texas where he said earlier this evening on our show, he said, you know, people in West Texas, his wife said, are going to understand you better than anybody. So he's out there where they love him. Has he well, needed to change? I, I think Bob Knight's still Bob Knight. I think when you take a look at that last year, to me, the Neil Reed incident, when that came out the week when it's NCAA time, like a week ago, like tomorrow night, that's when it happened before they played Pepperdine, that distracted that whole season. He's proven this year, taking kids... Throwing four guys off the team the first week that he met, a year ago in March, and developed this team to what it is today, where now they have a chance, in my opinion, seeing the brackets, to get to the Sweet 16. That's where he's at his best. Coaching teams, getting kids to do their job descriptions, and you don't have to tell every kid what the game plan. You have to be ready as a player to make your contribution. And I don't need to have a meeting every day with every player to say, here's your job description every day. You don't work it that way. That's what they call players' coaches. I don't think uh, you were a players' coach. You're called a players' coach. Your Bob Knight would be called a players' coach. But were you guys, in retrospect, as you look where you are in 15 years into the future for you and for Bob, maybe dinosaurs, in that there will be a diminishing number of kids who will want to play in a structured system like that? We'll have to see how he recruits because those kids that go to Texas Tech down the road are going to say, I want to be a part of this. And it's, I think it's a discipline, yeah. Maybe Red Arback's symbol was a cigar. Obviously, Knight's symbol now is the chair. But I don't think he's going to throw any chairs at Texas Tech. But the fact is this. He's going to get on referees. He's going to get on kids. But he's going to coach this team to where this team can win, which it proved this year. Nobody expected this team to win nine games last year wins. to get it to 23 wins and get a chance to get to the Sweet 16. Possibly that's the, the genius. Year. And that's why I look at it just saying, hey, He's going to be what he is, and, and the balance of this movie to me was excellent to show Mrs. Harris, to show what went on with Landon Turner, to show what went on with the one-on-one -on -one meetings when he had them with certain players, including Daryl Thomas, as well as Steve Alford. Dig, thanks. We appreciate it. Coming up, we'll have the results to our poll. We're asking the question online tonight, would you want your son or someone close to you to play for Bob Knight? We'll have the results coming up. Let's go! And on our online poll, whether you'd want your son or somebody close to you to play for Bob Knight, the results, 96,000 votes are in, 53.2% saying yes, 46% saying no. So a slight edge to those who would rather have a son or someone close play for Bob Knight. And we are back with our initial panel, Con Smith, former assistant coach with Bob Knight, Rick Calloway, and also with Winston Morgan. That number surprised you. You thought it'd be 80, 20, no. Why? The evil media? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what? I'm pleasantly surprised. I think it's great, really. You, th you had it on the nose, 60-40. 60-40, yes. Perceptions of Bob Knight. Uh, you heard our discussion earlier about the media. Uh, and you saw you got a little window into some of the media decisions. W w what do you think of the media? Well, let's, let me comment on John Feinstein and the um, success of this book and this movie. Um, he's had a lot of success with this. And I guarantee you that he hasn't went to uh, one coach or one player from that season and thanked them. You think, you think you're owed a thank you from him for that? Well, I think not the whole program. Mm -hmm. You feel the same way, Rick? Yeah. yeah. 
Loyalty, uh, which I guess is an outgrowth of your response, is, is a big thing. Um, you've defined it earlier with the, 